Obviously, I know Carlos Hector very, very well. Uh, they were great players at the University of Memphis, and you know, like you said, uh, since they've graduated and moved on, uh, still continue to be a part of their life, and they c still continue to be a part of the program. So I love being able to help him out and being, uh, being a help to him in any way that I possibly can. Uh, some of you guys know me. Obviously, I've coached you, Allison, for the last three years, uh, Mary Beth, and uh, you know some of you guys very familiar uh, faces. So uh, I'm familiar with most of you guys. Um, so just to give you guys a little bit of perspective, and so you understand kind of where I'm coming from, um, you know, I'm a, I'll give you a little bit of idea of my soccer background and you know, how I came to be where I'm at right now. Uh, so I grew up here in Memphis uh, playing youth soccer here. Uh, back in the day, there was no DA, there was no ECNL, uh, there were no other leagues. It was just one uh, unified soccer league all across the nation. Uh, I played for a club that is, that's still here in the, in the city, Memphis Football Club. It's not near as big as it used to be uh, back then. Uh, but back then it was one of the, uh, well, one of the biggest clubs in the state, uh, but it was one of the best clubs in the country. Um, you know, I played on a team that uh, we won state, I think it was seven out of, out of eight years that we were together. Uh, we won regionals uh, once, we went to the regional finals twice, uh, went to nationals one time, lost in the semifinals and nationals. Uh, so it was, it was a good youth career uh, from the club perspective. Uh, high school was, you know, the same as it, it is for everybody. Uh, it was a good playing experience. It was fun. I uh, enjoyed it. You, you win all the stupid awards you win in, the, in high school, and they mean a lot when you're in high school, uh, but don't necessarily mean a whole lot uh, moving beyond that. Um, you know, as a youth, ODP was very big. Uh, it's still uh, a relatively big and uh, one way that you can get into uh, some of the youth national teams. Back then, it was the only way. Uh, now, uh, the main pathway is uh, in the developmental academy, uh, but then you get scouted in through uh, ODP and different, uh, different events. Uh, back then, uh, I was a player on the state team, on the region team, and uh, I made it to the U-17 and U-23 national uh, pools. Uh, so, spent some time with the youth national teams uh, in different events with them. Uh, so, you know, being in those type of environments, being in those type of events, uh, you catch college coaches' attention. Um, you know, playing in the in the different interregional events, uh, you catch uh, attention by the the college coaches. And I was fortunate enough to to get some attention by some college coaches. Uh, right down the road, uh, down at UAB, which is uh, University of Alabama at Birmingham, um, I went down there for a visit. Had a great visit. Enjoyed the the coaching staff, the players. Uh, it was a really good experience. It was uh, about three and a half hours away from home. So I was far enough away from my parents where they couldn't just show up on my doorstep. Uh, and when I got lonely and bored, I could always come back home and uh, pay my friends and family a visit. Uh, and the team was a top 25 team year in and year out. So for me, it made sense to, to go to a school like that. So uh, I went down there uh, as a freshman um, thinking that you know what, this is going to be as easy as it has been at the youth level, at all the different levels of soccer. And uh, I, I came to quickly realize that once I got to college, it was a whole different ball game. I was a small fish in a big pond. Uh, I wasn't the fastest athlete on the field. I wasn't the most skillful athlete on the field. I wasn't the most technical athlete on the field. I wasn't the best player on the field anymore. So, you know, it was, it was a hard reality and a hard truth that I had to face real quick. Uh, it was either learn to adapt to the game, learn to adapt to the environment, or uh, I'm just going to fizzle out. Uh, and so as a, as a freshman, it was one of those things where, you know, I was used to playing 90 minutes every single game in club, in high school, in all the different uh, soccer I'd ever played. I played just about every single game, every single minute. So I was used to that. Well, the first three games when I was in college, I didn't step on the field one time. Uh, in the first two games, I didn't even get off the bench to warm up. Uh, so for me, that was a real difficult experience. It was something really hard, something I wasn't used to. Uh, but it was something that I used to, to motivate me throughout the course of that season and throughout the, the rest of my college career. Uh, as the season went on, I found more and more playing time. Uh, and by the middle of the season, I found myself in a starting role. And it was good. Uh, I enjoyed it. The team was, uh, was uh, on the hottest streak in the country. We were on a 13-game winning streak. Uh, I think we were up to 13th in the country. 
Uh, and so it was it was good at that time. And then as the, the college season wears on, which it does for everybody, um, every freshman, any player can, can tell you it's a, a real short season in a, in a very condensed period of time. And so uh, you find yourself um, losing that consistency or getting complacent in the way that, uh, that you're performing the way that you had played. And I was no exception to that rule. Uh, by the end of probably, I think it was seven games that I had started, uh, my performances had gone, uh, gone from here down to here. And so by the, the time we got to that seventh game, it was against the number two team in the, uh, the nation at the time at St. Louis. Uh, I didn't have a great game. Uh, I came off at halftime, didn't see the, the field again the rest of that game. And, uh, and so again, it was something very difficult for me. And you know, during the rest of the season, I found some minutes here and there, uh, but it wasn't, again, consistent to, to what I'd like and what I wanted. Um, we ended up finishing that season very, very well. We won the conference. Uh, we won the conference tournament, and then we went to the Elite Eight. Um, and, uh, and it was a great season for the, the team. It was a great season for myself. Uh, but for me, again, being used to being somebody who teams rely on, teams put a lot of stock in, um, to being just a bit role player was, uh, was something really difficult. And, uh, and so over the course of that, that spring, uh, you know, I had contemplated, is this the right fit for me? Is this the right place for me? Uh, do I want to transfer? Do I want to leave? Um, but in having conversations with my coaches, with my teammates, with my parents, uh, it was one of those things where, you know what, I could give up and move somewhere else and go somewhere else, but then I just find the same problems there. Uh, it wasn't about the coaches, it wasn't about the other players, it was about me. It was about me doing the work, uh, it was about me just putting my head down and making sure that I get up, I do all the things right each and every day, and if I do those, then, uh, then I'll find myself in, in the role that I want. And, uh, and so, you know, it was, uh, it, was, it was a tough spring. I found, uh, found a way to contribute as best I could. And when I came back in the next fall, I was much more prepared for that season. Um, you know, that season was a much better season for me in regards to playing time and the role that I had. But it was one of those where uh, you'll find when you go to college uh, or when you go and play at any other level, you're gonna you're gonna think that you're the best player in your position, and you're gonna get there, and you're gonna realize, you know what, I'm not, and uh, and that was something that over the course of my freshman and my sophomore year, uh, I thought I was an attacking midfielder. I thought that was a role for me, uh, but as uh, as time went on, I saw that in the collegiate game, that wasn't the role that uh, that I was best suited for, and uh, and as my sophomore year came about, I found myself playing as a right wing, a left wing. Uh, in, a, in a center midfielder. So kind of moved around uh, to, to find um, my best fit on the field and the best that I could contribute during that season. So while I did find more time on the field, it wasn't necessarily in a spot that I felt was best suited for me. But again, you trust the coaches, you trust your, uh, the staff that puts you out there to do what's best for the team. Uh, they're not gonna put somebody out there in a position that is hurting the team and so uh, that's something that I came to, uh, to trust. Uh, over the course of that, uh, that spring, um, they came to me and asked me, you, wanna, uh, you want another position change? And at that time, I was comfortable playing as a, as a winger. And, um, and you know, I, didn't, uh, I didn't really want to, but you know, it seemed like if I can get on the field, if it means I'm going to start, if it means I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play the whole game, then you know what, I'll try it. Uh, so they moved me to a center back. And, if you guys look at me, I'm probably not your prototypical center back. I'm not six foot tall. I'm not, uh, you know, a hulking mass of a of a player. Uh, but for me, it was uh, it was my IQ for the game. It was the way I read the game. It was the way I uh, I thought the game. Uh, and so, I played it that season or, or that spring season. And the first three games on our spring uh, spring roster or our spring schedule was the uh, senior U.S. national team who was in, uh, in Birmingham for a uh, training event, uh, preparing for the uh, 2002 World Cup, I believe it was. And then, uh, and then the other one, uh, the other two were two professional games. We played uh, FC Dallas uh, and we played the Atlanta Silverbacks. And so for someone who's never played as a, as a center back before, being thrown into that against that high caliber and that high quality um, opponents, was, uh, was something that was very daunting, but it was something that 
uh, I, I grasped and uh, it was something that I did very well with and helped me um, uh, on my journey for the rest of my college career. So I learned a lot in those three games uh, and I used that for the next, uh, next two falls as, uh, as I prepared for my junior and senior years. Uh, as time went on, uh, I got the role I wanted in the team. I was a starter. I played every minute of every game for the next, uh, next two years. I won every award that you can get in, uh, in college in regards to uh, All-American, All-Conference, All-Region. I, I had everything that's, uh, that you could want as a uh, college player. So um, while it didn't seem like it was the best fit for me, it was one of those things where you trust your coaches, you trust the staff uh, to do what's right, and they found the best fit for me. And so I think that, that prepared me the most. There's a lot of challenges to it. I had to learn different positions. I had to learn how to apply uh, my abilities to the game uh, in a different way than I ever had before. Uh, but it was something that, again, I, I learned and, uh, and it, was, it was great for my career as a, a collegiate athlete. Um, I was fortunate enough to, uh, at the end of that to, uh, to be invited out to the MLS Combine and uh, I went out there and had a, had a good combine out there. Uh, I was actually projected to, to be uh, drafted in the first three rounds uh, that didn't go my way, but uh, I was drafted eventually by the Chicago Fire. Uh, I spent my first year with them playing, and um, they loaned me out to, uh, um, to a team in Virginia Beach in the USL. Uh, so, you know, one of those things where, again, the MLS is a much different league now than what it is back then. There was no uh, developmental league. There was no developmental uh, rosters. Uh, roster sizes were very small, so if they wanted you on the roster but didn't think that you were going to get playing time with them, they'd loan you out to a uh, USL team or, uh, or a team in a different league to, uh, to get those minutes. So when you come back, maybe you could compete with them. Uh, as the year went on, um, I had a decent season with the team in Virginia. Uh, I'd moved all over the field. Uh, I played as a center back some games. I played as a right back some games. I played as a right wing some games, and I played as a center mid some games. So it was, uh, for me, that was, that was kind of getting back to uh, where I was as a sophomore in college uh, and have a team be able to rely on you as a, as a playmaker or as a, as a player who uh, is going to be consistently on the field in, uh, in one spot. And, you know, I didn't, I didn't get that uh, as, a, as a rookie, uh, but I started to find that role as a, as a, a second-year player. Um, I moved teams. I went to uh, the Atlanta Silverbacks, uh, which at the time was the uh, professional team in Atlanta. Uh, I played with them for, uh, I think it was three years. I uh, went on loan from them to FC Dallas my second year there. Uh, so spent some time there, and I actually played with our now head coach at the University of Memphis, Richard Mulrooney, uh, my, uh, my first year there. Um, had three really good years in Atlanta. Uh, played uh, almost exclusively as a center, uh, holding center midfielder there. Um, so that was good for me to, to be able to find that role again. Um, then I was moved, uh, the, uh, that was back when the, you guys are way too young for that, but there was a, uh, a, an issue with the economy at the time. And so uh, the teams in the different leagues were, uh, were starting to contract. And so Atlanta was gonna uh, go on hiatus for a year. Uh, so at that time, uh, I signed a contract with the Portland Timbers up in, uh, up in Portland, Oregon, obviously. Uh, I spent three years with them, uh, two years in the USL and one in the MLS. Uh, it was a great experience. It was probably the best uh, soccer experience of my life. Uh, we, got to, uh, we got to play up there in front of just about 20,000 uh, fans every single game. And when the team moved into the MLS, they expanded the stadium to, uh, to I believe it was 23,000. Uh, you had some of the best rivalries. You played against the Seattle Sounders. You played against the Vancouver Whitecaps, uh, who were right up the road. So some really, really good uh, games, some really good opportunities to, to play against some of the top players in the world. And in front of the, the what you want to think is the greatest fans in America when it comes to soccer. So it was, uh, it was a great time for me. Uh, after that three years, I, uh, I signed my last year uh, back with the Atlanta Silverbacks in the NESL. Um, and spent my last season with them. Uh, when I finished that season, I finished uh, as the all-time leader in appearances for, uh, for that club. 
Um, so it was, it was at the end of the day, it was nine years uh, playing professionally. I played in all the different leagues that we have here or all the different leagues that we had at the time uh, in the MLS, in the USL, and the NASL, which no longer does exist. Um, but it was, it was a great career. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I played against some of the top players in the world. I played against some of the top teams in the world. Uh, I had opportunities to play in each one of those teams uh, against teams like Manchester City, uh, against uh, Boca Juniors, uh, Independiente, um, played against Bayern Munich, played against uh, Ajax. Uh, so had some, some great opportunities to, to play against some of the, the players that you guys are now watching on, uh, on TV uh, when they were young, when they were coming up. So uh, my career uh, went from you know, some, some really lows to some real highs. Um, you know, I went through you know, some of the best of times as a player, some of the worst of times as a player. Uh, you know, for me, what I want you guys to, to take out of this is, you know, soccer is not an easy path. It's not an easy road. Uh, you may have an idea in your mind where you fit and how you think that you're going to fit, whether it's with your club team, whether it's with your high school team, whether it's with your college team. But I promise you, the path that you think that you have is not going to be the path that you're actually going to end up on. But if you're committed, if you're determined, if you work hard, uh, and you do the things right both on and off the field, anything that you guys want to do, anything that you guys set your minds to, you guys can do it. Uh, and I think there's a million different stories of different coaches, different players out there who have done that. Uh, and so I'm just one of the, the many examples that you have um, that can achieve your goals if, uh, if you really set your mind to it. So uh, that's my playing history. That's my playing career. Uh, and that's how I got into the position that I am right now, uh, which is I coach uh, college soccer, I coach youth soccer. Uh, Allison's team, if you guys don't know, uh, we just returned from, um, from Kansas City. Uh, we went to the national finals, lost in the national finals uh, this year. Uh, so that's what I do now. Uh, I coach and I really enjoy coaching. It keeps me around the game. It keeps me around uh, young players. Uh, it helps me be able to interact and be able to give you guys opportunities to either continue your careers as players or continue your careers as coaches, uh, which I know you guys all know Hector's a great coach. He's a young coach. Uh, he's an ambitious coach and he's going to have a great career at it. Uh, but, you know, I'm sure his path when he started college soccer wasn't I'm going to coach uh, youth uh, soccer players when I finish. Uh, but you know, again, the, the soccer world has a, has a weird way of uh, turning circle on us. Uh, and so now here he is uh, teaching you guys. And so hopefully you guys really absorb and listen to everything that he tells you. Uh, he's a great coach. He's got a lot of experience and he's going to help you guys uh, in, uh, in your careers as well. But, um, you know, so I'll, I'll go past the, that and into um, the the a little bit of the recruiting process because I know some of you guys are really young in it. Some of you guys have gone through it. Allison obviously has. Uh, some of you guys are just now starting that, that process. And, uh, and the, the college recruiting um, is, is really difficult sometimes. It can be really, really frustrating uh, figuring out what you want in a school, what you want in a team, what you want in a coaching staff. And so there's a lot of different things that, uh, that you guys need to, need to look at as you go through that process. First, you need to identify a school that, that fits your needs. Is it high academics? Is it a school that you can get in academically? Um, is it, uh, is it a, uh, you know, a, a university that plays in Division One. Is it a, a school that plays in Division Two or Three or NAI? Those are the types of things that you have to go through and uh, and check out. Um, you know, is it uh, is the coaching staff a staff that I I enjoy? You know, I think every coach when you go through the recruiting process is your best friend, and they are going to be you know they're going to sell you on their university. They're going to sell you on your program, but when you come to school you're most likely going to find that that's not always the complete truth. Yeah, those coaches might be great guys, but they might be really hard. They might be really difficult to, to get along with and deal with. And I can promise you, Coach Carlos and Hector can both tell you that, you know, I was probably one of the hardest coaches that they've ever had. Uh, but again, you know, those, those coaches will, will hold you to a higher standard 
because they see the talent and they see the potential in you as a, as a player and they won't let you fall beyond that. Uh, some coaches are just bad coaches and so uh, you have to familiarize yourself with the program. You have to familiarize yourself with the coaches, which is why uh, as a, as a um, young player, uh, you have to reach out to the coaches. You have to reach out to, to the different staffs. Uh, we, as a, as a college coach, cannot reach out to uh, players until you have gotten to your uh, junior year of college or junior year of high school. Uh, so if you think that, you know what, this coach is just going to show up at my games and he's going to come watch me and he's going to be offering me scholarships as a, as a freshman and as a sophomore, it's not going to happen. Uh, you're going to have to be contacting coaches. You're going to have to email. You're going to have to call. You're going to have to go to camps. Uh, you're going to have to send them schedules. You're going to have to do a lot of different things to, to get onto their radar. Uh, and so that's really important is you guys doing the groundwork first and foremost. Because if you think that colleges are just going to show up at your doorstep, you got another thing coming. You're going to find yourself in your senior year of high school wondering where are all the schools, where are all the scholarships, because it's not just going to happen. It's not just going to materialize. You actually have to go out and do a lot of the recruiting yourself to get the coach's attention. Once the coach has, uh, has, has your attention or you have the coach's attention, then uh, a lot of those different things can happen. You know, the official visits, uh, coming out uh, to your games, uh, calling you, texting you, emailing you, doing all those different things. But, you know, coaches don't typically just magically uh, want to, want to come, and, uh, come and watch you play. So they're going to have to hear from you guys first. Um, so in that process, I know uh, part of what uh, Hector wanted me to, to cover is uh, emails, uh, how to contact the coaches. So, you know, a couple things that, uh, that I, you guys should pay real close attention to is when you contact a college coach, just be, be personable. Uh, contact them and use their, their last name, use their first name, whatever they prefer to go by, uh, and make sure that you have the spelling correctly. Uh, my name's not that difficult to, to get right, uh, but uh, some of the other coaches on our staff constantly have the wrong spelling when, uh, when somebody contacts them. So once they get that and they see, you know what, he didn't research enough, he didn't put enough time into, uh, into this email, He's just going to dump it in the trash because if you're not going to pay close enough attention to those details, when you come onto a soccer field, you're not going to pay enough attention to the details that we have set out there for you. So uh, make sure that you get their name correct. Uh, when you contact them, we don't, we're not so dumb to think that we're the only school that you guys are ever going to contact and probably use the exact same email that you used. But when you go in there, Use some detail to the actual college that you're contacting. You know, talk about their season, talk about the city, talk about their program, talk about them personally. Uh, just give some detail like we actually feel like you are actually only talking to us. Uh, and when you do that, uh, when you personalize the emails and the different things that you have and you send them to different schools, make sure that you go back and double check that you've corrected everything in there because I can't tell you how many times I've gotten an email addressed to me saying, Dear Coach McManus, I can't wait to come watch the University of Alabama at Birmingham come and play against this team. Uh, and so when, when I get that, I'll either give them a very uh, uh, smart aleck uh, response in return and then dump it in the, the trash or I just throw it in the trash. Uh, you know, make sure that you contact the correct coaches and you give the right detail in those emails. There's something uh, that just burns up coaches uh, when you get the wrong information in there. And then the last piece of that is, if you're gonna contact every school in the country, don't, don't carbon copy everybody on the same email. Uh, don't have 400 college coaches on the exact same email. You can blind copy it, so we don't know you're actually copying every single college in the country. Uh, but again, uh, we prefer you guys not to be lazy. Uh, it, pick out a few colleges, be personable with them, reach out to them specifically and individually, and contact them and give them your details and information. Um, and so now you guys have you know, some, of the, some of the don'ts. Uh, I would say 
in the emails include your name, your phone number, your email address. Uh, those are obviously uh, important things to, to have in there. Uh, and then have some information about you as a player, but don't give a 10 page uh, uh, information on yourself. Just give some a real short blurb, what your team is, what age group you are, uh, a schedule of events that you're attending, a schedule of games that you guys are going to be playing in, and then um, and then uh, send us some kind of a highlight tape, some sort of highlight film, something that's you know three to five minutes long. Uh, and when we get highlight tape, we know what it is. You're not going to put stuff on there that that shows that you take bad touches or you you make mistakes in game you in your highlight tape you are superman you never make a mistake on it on a game but when you do that uh make sure that you put some things in there that show you turning a ball over and what your reaction is after you turn that ball over do you turn around and chase and defend and win the ball back right away if we see that typically that's a player that we want uh in our program somebody who isn't afraid to defend somebody who isn't afraid to make a mistake but when they make a mistake they are accountable to that mistake by defending and helping the team win it back um, you know those are important things to to see in there uh, now if you sh send us a tape that's you constantly just making one mistake after another and you having to go back and tackle and chase people well there's there's an issue there uh, but just make sure that it's not some some video that shows that you've never made a mistake on a field and that every time you touch a ball, the ball ends up in the back of the net because we know that that's not happening. Uh, so those are some uh, some simple things that, uh, that you can do, uh, some simple things to get onto a coach's radar. Uh, and hopefully that stuff will uh, will help you guys on your on your path. But um, anything I didn't cover, Hector? Okay, so I think uh, I think that's it for me. Thank you guys for the for the time. I appreciate it. And please listen to Coach Hector and Coach Carlos over there. They're great guys. They know what they're doing. So um, enjoy the rest of the day. All right, absolutely. Uh, great question. That's uh, that's one of the best questions. Uh, what do we look for when we recruit players? Uh, and for us, when we recruit recruit players, uh, I think one of the big things in I saw it in my career was versatility uh, a player who can play multiple spots i may not want to you may not want to we as a staff might not want you to have to play as a right back a right wing a center mid uh, or any of that uh, but if you find yourself in college getting recruited as a center midfielder you show up and the team has six center midfielders well how do i work my way into that rotation or how do i continue to play uh, until one of those those spots opens up, um, it's seeing a player who's who's versatile. Seeing a player who can play as a right back, even though we recruited them as a center mid. Seeing a player who can play as a striker, even though we recruited them as a center back. So versatility is one of the biggest things that we want to look for in a player. Can he play in multiple spots? Can he play with his right and left foot? Uh, because if you can play with your right and left foot. Typically, you can play on the right side of the field. You can play on the left side of the field. Uh, and so that's very, very important to a, a college coaching staff. And then the, the second part of that is uh, we look for a player with a high soccer IQ. Uh, and what that means is somebody who can think the game, who can read different situations, uh, who can play uh, you know, in different spots and be able to adapt and adjust to what the game is calling. If the score is 3 nothing. How should we play the game? If the score is one nothing, how should we play the game? So a player who has the ability to, to be able to adapt and adjust uh, by using their brain and thinking the game uh, is just as important to us as somebody who's the fastest, most athletic, biggest, strongest player on the field. Very good question, Will.